Well, I got the call from a colleague at about nine o'clock at night. Um, one of the park rangers down at Strawn had contacted one of the Tasmanian Museum staff and alerted us to the fact that there was a giant squid washed up on Ocean Beach down at Strawn. One of the park rangers went down and actually took some photos of the squid so we could see what kind of condition it was in and emailed them through first thing um, the next morning. Once we had a look at those photos, we decided that it was in good condition and we set off. We were racing against the tide was one of the, the first things we had to deal with. Uh, so we basically got the squid into the trailer that we borrowed from Parks, got it into the trailer as, as quickly as possible. Took some measurements before we got it off the beach, took some photos, but basically popped it on the squid mat or a whale rescue mat and um, lifted it into the trailer. It was still very fresh, it wasn't smelly, the tissue was very firm and that's an indication of it hadn't been on the beach for very long because they tend to decompose quite quickly. It was in a pretty bad condition, it lost its two long feeding tentacles. Also the ends of all the tentacles had been eaten, probably by seabirds. By the time we finished all that work in the afternoon it was too late for us to head back to Hobart. So we had the, the squid in the trailer surrounded by a whole lot of ice, keeping it cool. Um, and then we took it to Strawn Primary School the next morning before we headed out of Strawn and show, um, showed the squid to all the, the students there. They were quite excited to see it. Um, and once we'd, we'd finished that, we wrapped it all up, popped more ice on and headed straight back for Hobart. We took some um, preliminary uh, tissue samples while we were actually in Strawn. We took small pieces of the tissue and put it into 95% ethanol, which is an alcohol, and that's for future DNA work. We then, when we got back to Hobart, we took some larger t tissue samples, um, did a quick dissection to open up the mantle and look for any um, internal organs or reproductive organs, but they were all unfortunately gone. Possibly washed out when the squid washed onto the beach or eaten by... Um, seabirds. There were some holes in the mantle that indicated that birds had actually pecked through the skin and eaten the nice juicy bits. We also dissected out the ear bones or the statoliths and that was with the assistance of um, Dr Greta Peckle from the University of Tasmania. We needed to get the ear bones out before they froze. Uh, the freezing process would have destroyed them. What we what Greta's going to be doing with the, with the ear bones is actually looking at them under the microscope. And the ear bones have growth rings on them, just like a tree has growth rings. And science, scientists believe that, um, well, certainly for other squid it's true. In other squid species, what happens is there's a growth ring for every day that the squid's alive. So they can actually count the growth rings and get an idea of how long the squid's been alive for. But there's only been three other squid, or three other giant squid, that have actually been aged this way. So we don't really know if the same thing applies, if there's a growth ring for every day that the giant squid's alive, but all the informa more information that we can gather, that will um, help to uncover the mystery of how old giant squid are, because we actually don't know the answer to that question. It's really rare to get a giant squid, and that's one of the reasons why we don't know very much about giant squid, because we just don't, scientists don't have many specimens to work on. So when one does become available like this one, scientists, from all over the world do request various sorts of tissue samples so we'll be sending some tissue to a couple of different scientists on the mainland and also possibly some overseas. When we first brought the squid back to Hobart we didn't know how many requests for tissue we were going to have um, and the squid had been in the freezer for a month so that gave the scientists quite a lot of time to contact us let us know what they wanted so we chopped off two tentacles so we've got plenty of tissue to send to the science, scientists who have already requested it and any future scientists who who may um, ask for tissue down the track. The two vital pieces of equipment were a tank big enough to hold the giant squid. The squid, the mantle or the body of the squid is about 1.7 metres long and the mantle plus the head weighs about 150 kilos so we needed a really big tank um, to put that in. Fortunately we actually had one um, so that, that solved one problem. The other thing we needed to think through was how to lift a slippery heavy giant squid from the floor of the freezer actually into the tank and to do that we got a special mat made um, we call it a squid mat. It was a big piece of um, tarpaulin like material with handles on the side that we could roll the squid onto. Then it took about six people holding the mat all around the edges to actually physically lift the squid and place it into the tank.
The formalin is the preservative that we add first, and that's quite a toxic chemical. So we had to wait till all the media, all the other staff had gone away. Then we had three museum staff put a whole lot of safety gear on, including full face masks and gloves and overalls. And they were the ones responsible for first injecting the tissue with um, formalin to make sure that the preservative got right into the centre of the tissue. And then pouring about 100, uh, 400 litres of the fixative into the tank. It's not just a matter of pouring it straight from the container it comes in. We had to make it up to a special concentration. So that took a little bit of time. The squid will stay in the formalin solution for, a, for at least a month. Um, so in a month or two, it can stay in there for a little bit more than a month. In a month or two, it will come out of that formalin solution. We'll wash it off with fresh water, um, dispose of that formalin, and then replace the formalin with ethanol, which is an alcohol that's a much more um, user-friendly chemical. Not many museums actually have giant squid specimens, so it's really great for us to actually have this specimen that scientists can use um, and for us to be able to provide various scientists around the world with the tissue because the TMAG will now be involved in any future research that happens with this giant squid. So uh, help to um, help TMAG to get and provide information on um, invertebrates and interesting animals that occur around our coast.